I'm Jasmine Moradi, and you're listening to the Queens of Tech podcast, a podcast series about workplace role models, where I get the opportunity to ask 60 plus questions to female influencers about their journey into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My vision with this podcast is to raise the workplace ecosystem for women in tech. My mission is to bridge the gap between schools and workplaces by highlighting female role models in STEM to encourage more young girls and women to unleash their full potential in these fields to reach top leadership roles. In this episode, I'm very excited to welcome my guest, Oriel Prince, CEO and founder of Change My Face. Hey, Oriel. Hi. I'm very happy to have you joining us from UK today. How are you? I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, let us dive into your journey into STEM. Hope you're ready for the Queens of Tech 60 plus questions. I am. Let's warm up with a few fun facts about you. How would you describe your personality in three hashtags? Art lover, curious and happy. How would you describe your life in three sentences? I'm a non-technical owner of a tech company. I'm a city person who actually doesn't live in a city. And I'm casually observing how AI is starting to take over the world. What kind of music stimulates and motivates you the most? Pretty much any music from the French radio station. What is your personal motto? As long as you're alive, then anything is possible. What is your favorite book? I'm going to say The Goldfinch by Donna Tarr. The book is so beautifully written. It's set in New York and I read it while I was living there. It reminds me of a really great time. What is your favorite podcast? I really love podcasts which explore people's business journeys. And I'm going to say Queens of Tech is one of the best. Mac or PC? Both. Say something interesting about you that most people don't know. Most people probably don't know that I studied forensic facial imaging with the FBI Academy in Quantico. What is your hidden talent? I can honestly say it must be truly hidden as I can't find it. If you were going to write a book about your life, what would the title be? Face it. Great start, Oriol. Now, let us dig deeper. Our childhood has an effect on our adulthood. Our early experiences shape our belief about ourselves, others, and the world. Now, I want to discover your childhood. Where did you grow up? I grew up in London. What was your dream job as a child? An artist. What was your favorite subject in school? Art. What was your least favorite subject? Probably chemistry, mainly due to a very boring teacher. What is your earliest memory of technology and the arrival of the internet? I'm from the generation that didn't have the internet growing up. So when it came to open the massive world of opportunities, I was actually really lucky to meet Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web in the mid nineties. Which were the three first technology gadgets you owned? I think it was probably a Nintendo game and watch, a Walkman, and then a PC. Who was your female role model growing up and why? When I was young, role models weren't really talked about. The nearest probably would have been my sister, who was five years older, and the epitome of cool. And my mum, who ran her own business and was very independent. Uh, but when I was at Art College, I was quite obsessed with Frida Kahlo, the artist, and I uh, really admired how she used her creativity to help combat her physical frailty. And I actually named our dog after her. How do you think where you grew up and the school you went to and the generation you come from influence your education and career choice? I went to school in the heart of London and always felt so proud to be a Londoner amongst so many different nationalities. Our school encouraged individuality, but academically we weren't pushed at all. So I had a great art teacher and flourished in the creative subject. Interesting. Now, I'm going to read two quotes. First one, how does the universe expect me to choose a career path at 16? I can't even choose what I want for dinner. Second, Abraham Lincoln said, I quote, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So, Oriel, I want to know the choice behind your career path. Where and what did you study at university? I studied a degree in communication media, specifically illustration and photography at Maidstone Art College. Who and what influenced you to get into your chosen field? 
after art college, I was freelancing as an illustrator. Obviously, it was difficult to get consistent work. But at that time, there was a really high profile case of the husband and wife serial killers, Fred and Rose West, who were based actually not far from me now in Gloucestershire. They were found guilty of torturing and murdering at least 11 women. And the thing that sparked my curiosity was that these women, some of whom had been missing for up to 20 years had become frozen in time and I found myself wanting to help so I joined the missing people charity in London and went on to become a forensic artist which eventually led to my current career. What professional roles have you had before that led you to start your own company? I was head of the identification and reconstruction department at Missing People, working as a forensic artist and aging long-term missing persons. I was then trained at the FBI Academy and also trained with the Medical Artists Association of Great Britain, which I've been a member of for the last 25 years. What has Change My Face do? Change My Face using his AI and machine learning to create face-changing software to visualize one's future space with lifestyles such as drinking, smoking, diet and exercise and basically helps people to change habits for the better. What is your title and what is your main responsibilities? I'm founder and CEO and I do nearly everything apart from the technical side. Why did you start the company? When I left Missing Persons, I used my forensic skills in media projects, showing how people's faces change with age and lifestyle. This basically led to building apps to change health behaviours, such as we built the Drinking Time Machine and Drinking Mirror apps for the Scottish Government to encourage women to drop a glass size. What does a typical workday look like for you? It's different most days, but normally starts with responding to emails, connecting with potential new customers, but also working on developing new products and strategizing about new markets. I love the quote, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Zoriel, what do you love about your role? It's never boring and I'm often out of my comfort zone, which is probably healthy. And I just love it when customers get value from using our products and services. What is the best experience you've had in your role so far? Any examples? Probably watching kids and adults using our face age technology for the first time, seeing our apps go viral and starting some great conversation. And then what is the biggest challenge of Accounto so far and how did you tackle that? There have been two big challenges recently. I'd say the first was shifting the business from an agency style model to a subscription model. And then secondly, I'm starting to incorporate AI machine learning technology. We really started at ground zero and luckily managed to find some amazing people to research the best solutions for us. And then put into practice some effective machine learning models, which we've now built into a new app. What do you wish everybody understood about your role? Probably that I don't always know what I'm doing. What is the one common myth about your profession or field that you want to disapprove? That CEOs don't always know what they're doing. What do you love about working in the tech industry? There's an amazing energy because tech is constantly changing. That might be for better or worse, but it's really an amazing sector to be in. Oprah Winfrey said, I quote, Think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. So, Oriol, what have by far been your biggest achievements in your career? I'd say probably being able to combine my artistic skills with technology to build some interesting products. What is the biggest factor that has helped you become successful? Any success habits? Yes, just keep on doing what you're doing. I always think if you give up, which sometimes it's tempting to, someone else will just step into your shoes and you'll always think that could have been me. Also, don't forget to look back and have a sense of confidence and pride in the things you've achieved. And of course, enjoy what you do because you'll do it much better. How do you measure your own performance at work? I'd say there's a direct impact on the business. If I'm not performing well, it means the technology is probably not performing well and my customers will always let me know when things aren't as good as they should be. What is your biggest failure in your career and what did you learn from it? There's definitely been lots of small fails with customers when our tech hasn't worked as it should. There was one time, especially when it failed temporarily during an academic research study. And those are really the worst moments. What is inspiring and motivating you the most in your role and career right now? 
I think the advancement of AI technology and how it could be used to improve health outcomes, basically helping people to live healthier for longer. Let us now jump into the influence of mentors, role models, champions, and sponsors. Role models can consciously or subconsciously be a powerful force in our lives. In addition, champions can stand up and advocate for us and open the world of possibilities. Sponsors match emerging talent with leaders and influential employees who can help us move ahead in our careers. So Oriol, do you have a champion or a sponsor today? I had regular mentoring for a couple of years with an inspiring woman called Bree Stenner, who runs a community for women in technology called It Girls Rock. We're always in contact with each other. I also have a great business advisor, Angela Spenley at Innovate UK Edge, who helps keep me focused. But I'm also a member of some great communities like Ada's List and Tech Ladies, which are brilliant spaces to ask questions and meet people. Who is the female role model you look up to in your field? I'm going to say Tina Woods, just because I'm reading her book at the moment, How to Live Healthier for Longer with AI. She's a champion for technology and health and using data for good. And she really places the emphasis on disease prevention rather than just treating it. History shows that it has been more common for men having mentors, champions and sponsors in business than women. So Oriel, how important do you think is to have a mentor, champion and sponsor during one's career? I think it's really important. It's a very hard journey to go on your own and to get everything right. And it's invaluable to get fresh perspectives from someone who knows your industry sector. Let's move on to leadership. Adina Friedman, president and CEO of Nasdaq said, I quote, empowering those around you to be heard and valued makes a difference between a leader who simply instructs and one who inspires. What does leadership mean to you? I think leadership means allowing others to learn and prosper around you and their success is your success. What do you consider a good versus a bad leader? In my experience, a bad leader is someone whose ego prevents them from sharing knowledge and nurturing their team, whereas a good leader has the generosity and drive to do the opposite. Who is your favorite female tech leader and why? I'll go with Martha Lane Fox, the entrepreneur and philanthropist, because she was one of the original pinups from the dot-com bubble. And she's the youngest female member of the House of Lords and basically champions internet access and education for everyone. How would you describe yourself as a leader? Oh, a total work in progress. And as a leader, what values are most important to you? Vision, honesty, and being able to admit mistakes. What leadership lessons have you learned that have formed you into the leader you are today? I've learned to communicate goals clearly, never assume anything and always listen. What are your three strengths and three weaknesses? Weaknesses, possibly not taking enough risks, just being a business owner, occasional imposter syndrome, and sometimes finding it hard to put myself out there. My strengths, using my creativity in the technology that we create, maybe not giving up and being a champion for women in business and inclusivity. Let us now jump into the hottest topic in business today, workplace culture, unlocking the power of diversity, equality, inclusion, and belonging. Oriel, what do DEIB mean to you personally? I'm a woman, I'm over 50 and working in the tech industry. So there have been times when I felt that I don't really fit in, but the long to great communities where I can connect with like-minded people really helps. And I believe we need to look towards a time when differences are celebrated and people are judged on their abilities and skills, not their ethnicity or gender. What do you consider being three to five signs of good company culture if you were to join a company? Good communication, room to be yourself and a diverse team. As a woman, what has been the most significant barrier in your career and how have you overcome these challenges? Probably not having a background in technology because that may have speeded up the strategy of the business and the decision making. But then again, I found a really good team to surround me and help me overcome this. Why do you think it's important for more women to join the tech industry, especially as leaders? It's good to hear there are more women leaders in the industry, which has historically been male dominated, but there need to be a lot more. For one thing, there are obvious disparities within AI, for example, as many models have been trained using data that's gender and race bias towards white males. So having more women who are involved in AI tech, for example, going forward should help to balance this out. 
Do you and how do you speak with your female and male colleagues about DIP, for example, salary gaps and promotions? Most of my team are currently outsourced, but our policy is always to be open and transparent about salaries and promotions. There are many public and internal discussions about the barriers women face from reaching higher position in the tech industry. How do you feel it has affected and is affecting you? And what is your advice on how to best unblock these roadblocks? Having strong female leaders and companies making sure that they hire more females is one way to unblock this. It is changing, but really slowly. There needs to be investment early on in schools, I would say, to steer girls into technology, as there seems to be a drop-off from science subjects around 15 years old when girls are picking their key subjects. Attracting is great, but as the tech industry finds it hard to especially retain women, what is your best advice or strategies for how companies can work to build a stronger corporate culture that engages gender diversity and equality? I think the recent pandemic has shown that flexible working is here to stay in one form or another. One of the barriers is having to combine your home life with work, but also recognizing that products or services are aimed at a diverse population. With that in mind, it stands to reason that companies need to have a diverse team when making decisions. What would you say are the few challenges of implementing DEIB culture in a workplace today? Wherever you have a mix of culture, race and gender, this can present communication problems, but this can be overcome by respecting each person's individuality and seeing that as a culture patch rather than a culture clash. In a diverse workplace, every person has a unique set of strengths and skills which can benefit the whole team. New cultures, working styles and perspectives can help to build better products and services. Why and how do you think companies would benefit from having workplace gender diversity and equality, especially better gender representation at sea level? Needless to say, all companies would benefit this as it reflects the changing society we're living in. It's a given that companies with diverse teams are going to provide better products and services. How much do you think the industry has changed regarding this subject since you joined? Massively, in the sense that there's far more discussion around diversity and inclusion, now along with strong data that shows it really benefits the economy. But what I don't know is how much companies have actually changed in response. Looking back on your career, what one thing would you have changed in your working environment to break the bias? I think looking back, I didn't see myself as a woman in business because there were far fewer female role models in business, especially tech. Maybe seeking out role models and mentors much earlier would have helped. Looking forward, what will you do as a leader to improve the bias for the next generation of women in tech? Definitely encourage younger girls who are creative to look towards technology. Also, really look at the whole issue of creating data for AI that's less biased. Ultimately, most aspects of our future will involve some kind of AI. So why wouldn't women and girls want to be a part of it? Let us move on to another hot topic in business today, which is work-life balance and mental health. Oriol, I'm sure that you, without a doubt, have a busy lifestyle. How do you take care of yourself to maintain a good mental health? I go swimming to de-stress, even if it's icy cold. Have you ever experienced burnout? There are definitely times when I've been overwhelmed and can start to feel totally inadequate and demotivated. I think in those times, the best thing to do is just step away and see things from a completely different perspective and basically understand that your life and health doesn't depend on the success of your business. What is your advice on how companies can create a more mentally healthy workplace in the new now? probably goes back to good communication, offering access to mental health resources while helping employees to maintain physical health and wealth. What motivates you every day to get out of bed? My lovely husband and my two kids, my dog Frida, who wakes me up each morning and takes me for a walk. Now, let us wrap up with a few words of wisdom and piece of advice for our listeners. Oriol, what is the best piece of advice you've been given that has helped you during setbacks in your role and career? The best advice I was given was to determine your end goals, break those down into smaller goals, and then break them down again so that the tasks you're handling become bite-sized rather than huge mountains to climb. And then what is the worst advice you've ever been given and how did you tackle that? 
probably naysayers. It's amazing how many people warn you against doing things in all aspects of your life. But when we were considering moving our technology to AI, we were advised not to move in that direction by a number of people. But if we hadn't, I don't believe we'd still have a business today. Is there something you wish you would have known or a skill you wish you had when starting out in the tech industry? I think I may have got some experience on a corporate level just to gain some knowledge before starting out on my own. If you had the ability to go back in time when you were just at the beginning of your career, what advice would you give to your younger self? Definitely learn to code and again, get some early experience in larger companies to understand how business processes work. What advice would you give to young girls and women who want and trying to break into STEM fields today, especially wanting to become next generation leaders? I think if young girls are already wanting to break in, then they're halfway there. It's the ones who don't believe that they can do it. They can't be technical, that need to be persuaded. Last but not least, what is next for you in your role and career in tech? What are your career aspirations for Change My Face? The next thing is we're going to be working on inclusive image data sets for our AI machine learning models, looking at skin analysis and what we can tell about our health from a snapshot of our faces and uh, even maybe do a podcast. Thank you Earl so much for being a guest on the Queens of Tech podcast. Sharing your journey will without a doubt inspire change and reshape company culture for the next generation of women in tech. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you have worked in the tech industry a minimum of three years and would like to share your journey, please nominate yourself or somebody you know to i at jasminemoradi.com. For more podcast episodes and to learn more about the Queens of Tech initiative and to support us, visit Queens of Tech.